Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Looking to get some keys made, luxury keyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid-City Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Do not attempt to adjust your sets. This is not <laughs> Roger Kador. Coach unable to be with us this week, but as usual, Kate Adams filling in very graciously. Kate, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Clarence. Thanks for asking. I'm happy to be here for yes. Roger Kador. Always awesome. happy to fill in. Awesome. Let's start as we typically do this time of year, talking LSU football. Tigers go into the belly of the beast, into Tuscaloosa. Alabama and finally get that eight year monkey or in this case that eight year elephant off their backs. Uh, it was incredible. I mean everyone in Louisiana has been waiting for this moment for su such a long time. Mm -hmm. Everyone is still celebrating the win even though we've got Ole Miss coming up this week. That's okay because we right. want to hang on to the joy of the Alabama win for as long as we can. Uh -huh. can. And I know that that was one of Coach O's biggest goals when he became coach, especially with all the criticism he received when he first became coach. Now, you, you've you always been honest with me as long as I've known you, Kate, so I, I have no reason to think that you'll be otherwise now. How are you feeling heading into that game? Um, you know, I, I felt like the Tigers could pull it out, but kind of how we were talking about earlier, um, I want, I needed to see it to believe it just right. because it has been such a long time. Yeah. It's been eight games, seven years since it's happened. Um, we've all been kind of scarred. And so I just wanted <laughs> to make sure, you know, that our Tigers were going to come in there and get the win. But I, I was, I was pretty confident they were. I just needed to see it to believe it. Coach O said for the first time with this team ever, he told the team, heading over to Alabama, we got them. We got the players, we've got the coaches, we've got the scheme, we've got everything we need to beat Alabama. That's a heck of a statement to make to your team. I think it is a heck of a statement, but he's not lying. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he, he can actually say the statement he made with confidence because he knows for sure that they were the better team. That's what he told the media. He told all of us. He said, I've already told my Tigers we're the better team and we're going to go in there and win, mm -hmm. and we've got all the tools to do it. And well, so he was excited to get that win, I know for sure. Well, not nearly as excited probably as the rest of the Tiger Nation. We've got highlights from that historic encounter. So as Kate and I continue our conversation, we'll ask the guy in the trucks to go ahead on and roll that. Joe Burrow, Kate, continues to lead this team with some very gritty play at quarterback. This guy is a warrior that's second to none, isn't he? This guy is, we're not going to see another like him. He's a generational guy. Yeah. He's a Drew Brees. He's a Tom Brady. I mean, literally, I think he's like the next Drew Brees. I actually think he broke a stat, and the last person to break that stat was Drew Brees. I mean, he's incredible. The way he handles himself, though, mentally is so impressive. I uh, heard an announcer say, I wish I could remember who it was so I could credit the announcer. But the announcer said, Clyde Edwards Elair put all doubts to rest about his capabilities. And as a result, this guy will never have to buy another drink in this town as long as he lives. Cold drink, orange juice, 
anything else, he'll never have to buy another drink in this town as long as he lives. That's exactly right. I mean, you saw, saw how emotional Clyde was after the game. He's from Baton Rouge originally. I mean, you know how much that win means to him, too. Mm -hmm. Um, especially his family. He, he said he had been waiting for that moment um, pretty much all his life, and it was incredible being able to experience that himself and know he's never going to have to buy another drink. I mean, he has, he's outshined the other huge running backs that we had, and everybody said he couldn't do it because of his size. Well, guess what? He could. Yeah, and, and that's one of the marvelous sidebar stories in all of this. It, it, here's the guy the, that doubt surrounded him from the very beginning of his career and backing up some of the guys that he's backed up over the years as we watch that you got Moss right there yeah you got Moss man I loved watching Randy Moss get to talk about his son I, we had to bring it up with the oh without a doubt without a doubt but, but you look at Clyde's story that's the story in perseverance didn't get all the ink that uh, the big time running backs got but yet and still when his time came around he made the most of the opportunity he definitely did. It kind of reminds me a lot of Nick Brosett last year, kind of similar situation, but mm -hmm. Clyde waited his turn. Um, he was patient, and he proved all, all the haters wrong, which I love. I love when anyone is able to prove people wrong. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, the defense obviously gave up a few more points than uh, any of us were hoping that they would give up, but when all is said and done, we'll take it, Walter. I mean, we'll definitely take it. When when all is said and done, you're still going up against Alabama, which was a top five matchup. I, I mean, it, it's still an incredible feat, and we got the win. So, yeah. yes, would we like to see more from our defense? I'm sure, but we're, you've got to realize we're playing one of the toughest teams in the nation, so you get what you get. Speaking of, you had to know at some point, jumping out to that 20-point lead, you kept saying, if, if you're like me, all right, when's the comeback going to start? When's it going to start? I mean, this is Alabama. They're in Tuscaloosa. They're in Bryant-Denny. There's no way they're going to go down like this. When that comeback, that furious comeback started, what was going through Kate's mind? Well, I knew we could pull it out. I think they just needed to get their minds right. I mean, you know, they're not going to do everything perfectly, but they played one heck of a game, and, and I, I knew that the Tigers were going to pull out because I knew this is our year to beat Bama. So any fear that the team is going to let off the gas now that they've gotten over that Alabama hurdle? No fear at all, actually, was at the player interviews and uh, Coach O interview. They know they've got to take it one game at a time. Even Ole Miss with the record that they have, they're not going to let up because, because Ole Miss is going to play their best game because they're playing LSU. Oh, yeah. And so they know that they've got to take it game by game and persevere if they want to get to their end goal at the end of the season. When we come back, we will shift gears from purple and gold to blue and gold when this week's edition of the Roger Cato Show with Kate Adams <laughs> continues. Stay close. out of the chaos. Hi folks, Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at scoreboards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show, 8 o'clock Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. <laughs> hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, Take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you.
Welcome back to segment two of this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Kate Adams filling in for Coach Roger Kador this week. Kate, let's talk a little Jaguar football. Taking on an outmatched, obviously, Virginia Lynchburg team, but the Jaguars did what good teams do. They killed the net with a sledgehammer. They definitely did. You know, they came out early like they needed to do, and they just got the job done. And that's mm -hmm. what they wanted to do, and that's what you got to do anyway. So, quite right, proud we, of those, those Jags. Sorry. We have highlights from Mumford Stadium, so we'll ask the crew in the truck if they'll go ahead and roll those highlights. Of course, now, and, and you alluded to it, uh, the fact that the Jaguars did what they're supposed to do, score early and score often and take Virginia Lynchburg out of this game early on. That, that's right. I mean, you've got to do that. Even, it doesn't matter what team you're going up against. You always want to get ahead early because it's better for you in the end game, basically. Because mm -hmm. if you can get more points on the board early, even if the other team comes out and starts to score, you can still make sure your team's in a good position to still get the win. As we uh, watch the highlights, you can see that uh, it was truly a complete game effort from the Jaguars. Offense, defense, special teams clicking on all cylinders. Of course, now, when you're playing an 0-8 team, there's always a tendency there that you could take a team lightly. We got to give credit to Coach Odoms and his staff for having the team focused and ready to play and not overlooking a team that had yet to win a game this year. You're exactly right, Clarence. You can never overlook any uh, competition that you ever have because they can come out on fire. Even if they're 0-8 going in, it doesn't matter. You've always got to play your best game, and you always have to take it game by game. And, of course, that's one of the lessons that organized uh, athletic competition teaches. Uh, and the same is true for LSU on the SEC level as it is for Southern in the SWAC. Anytime you have a certain uniform on, be it LSU or Southern, the opposition just always seems to give you their best shot. That's exactly right, and it's because it's the two best uh, teams here in Louisiana that we got on the college level. That's probably right, <laughs> but it is. It is true. They're going to give you their best game because they want to get that win and say they could get the win over you. It was uh, a bit of a shocker in the SWAC in that Grambling State beat Alcorn, giving Alcorn their first conference loss of the season. Uh, kind of proves to everyone that, hey, wait a minute, these guys are human after all. But I think it also shows, as we were talking, at any level, whether it's college, uh, pro, what have you, on any given day, anybody can beat you if you don't bring your A game. That's exactly right, and I mean, that's basically what happened within that game, and we also saw it this past Sunday with the Saints. So uh, you always got to play your A game, <laughs> and um, because if you don't, then the next team will. Speaking of, of not overlooking anyone, before the Jags can think about Grambling State and a potential rematch with Alcorn State and a potential conference championship, they got to get by hated rival Jackson State. That's right. I mean, they just need to stick to the game plan that Coach Odom's given him, giving um, his team. Coach Odom's obviously a very talented coach. He knows what he's doing. I think as long as the players are under his lead, they'll be just fine. Well, hopefully we'll remember where we heard it first. Coach got the backing from Kate Adams. That's supposed to go a long way, at least as far as I'm concerned. When we come back, we will continue with segment three of this week's edition of the Coach Roger Cador Show. Stay close. Looking to get some keys made, luxury keyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. out of the chaos getting a letter from the irs that you owe back taxes can be scary but it doesn't have to be 
Call Go Tax Resolution in Mandeville at 985-722-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Mandeville at 985-722-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Welcome back for segment three of this week's edition of the Roger Cador Show. We come to you this week, as always, from Scoreboards, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Baton Rouge's newest sports grill. If you've not come out yet, you're truly missing a treat. Come on out. We'd love to see you. Last week, we gave you a short introduction into the insight and the life of the new superintendent of our nationally recognized Baton Rouge Recreation and Parks Commission, more affectionately known as BREC. This week, our special correspondent, Aaron Fulbright, continues this introduction and to a very gifted young man. Aaron, it's all yours. One of the, the, the crown jewels of, of Baton Rouge is uh, City Park Lakes and the lakes area there. They're, they're a, a big attraction to uh, out-of-town visitors. They're a big recruiting tool for LSU, uh, for students as well as student athletes. And so we're, we're happy to be able to announce that working with uh, LSU and uh, local officials, the mayor, uh, state officials, the governor, uh, that we have some improvements come in the city park lakes. We're going to make the lakes deeper and so that the water is healthier than it is today. Um, and we're also going to build out safer walking and biking trails so that people who exercise there, and there are thousands of people who go there on a daily basis, uh, that they can exercise and recreate without having to worry about whether a car is right behind them or something like that. So we're excited about the upcoming plans for city parks lakes. That's awesome. I'm excited about that, too. I love I'm from California. So having those amenities to work out yes. um, and seeing more of that in our, our citizens getting active is uh, very important. Um, so you again, you've worked with Breck prior to becoming superintendent. Correct. And now you still do some training for upcoming leaders within the uh, recreation and parks community um, yes. field. Uh, what interests you about recreation and park? Why are you so passionate about this? Well, I came to Breck uh, looking for a job, and I found a career, you know. And so I'm very passionate about parks and recreation because of the many benefits it pro provides to our community. Uh, people know about the health and wellness aspects of getting out and walking in the park. But there are also many other benefits, you know, economic uh, benefits. People who live next to a well-maintained park have higher property values. Uh, the environmental benefits when we talk about uh, trees and green space. Uh, recently, we've talked a lot about uh, uh, stormwater management benefits, the fact that our parks are designed to hold stormwater, and that's very important um, in our part of the, the country where it seems to flood quite often. And so if we can, um, you know, help the community out by holding more of that water. It prevents it from being in people's homes and communities. So uh, educational benefits, we know that when children are playing, they are learning, um, and the list goes on and on. So we, we, I, I love that the fact that um, it's so diverse and there's so many different things to do, uh, from a zoo to golf courses to a water park um, to exercising. The fact that we service everybody in the community, regardless of age or race or uh, socioeconomic backgrounds. And so I, I just love parks and recreation and very excited to be in the position I am now to serve so many people. Awesome. So what is breaking out? So right now you guys are telling everyone to break out. What does that mean? So break out is a, a, a slogan that, was, that came up from our, our communications department as a way to get people to... Uh, break out of their normal sort of habits. So we want you to, to break out and get off the sofa and, and, and go out into a park. And we want you to, you know, break out of traffic and go enjoy uh, a kayak or something like that. And so just sort of breaking out of your normal uh, sedentary routine and, and getting out and having fun and enjoying some of the great amenities we have at Breck. Awesome. Well, thank you for speaking with us, and we encourage you all to break out um, and get and enjoy the uh, parks around Baton Rouge. Back to you, Coach and, and uh, Clarence.
Aaron, thank you. Outstanding job as always, and nothing but the best of luck to Corey uh, and his endeavors to keeping Breck the nationally acclaimed and nationally recognized organization on behalf of the citizenry of East Baton Rouge Parish that they currently are. When we come back, we will head to segment four and wrap up this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show with special guest Kate Adams. Stay with us. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Beep. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Hi folks, Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at scoreboards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show, eight o'clock Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. Welcome back for the closing segment of this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. As always, we come to you from Scoreboards, Baton Rouge's newest sports grill, located at 10655 Corsi Boulevard. Well, I guess we have um, dodged this topic for long enough, Kate. Our, our guys, the black and gold, Saints stunk up the joint against the Falcons in the dome of all places. What happened to our guys, Kate? I know. I was actually at that game. Um, it, there was like a weird vibe in the building that day. It didn't. Something didn't seem right. I just. Right. I, I just don't think everything was in place. But honestly, not that I'm happy for any loss. But I kind of think going through this loss is it's better to go through it at this time in the season oh, definitely. than later on. Definitely. So, and now the Saints can look at those mistakes they made in that game against the mm -hmm. Falcons and go ahead and clean those up as they move forward. Now you're being too kind, personally my humble opinion only, I think it was clearly a case of a 7-1 and one team going against a 1-7 and seven team, saying, eh, we got this, you know, but, but, but in hindsight, I, I get even more upset because you had two weeks. You had a bye week. You're 7-1, and one, taking on a 1-7 and seven team in your place and you get your butt handed to you on a platter. What's going on here? I get it, but it's like we talked about with the Jags. It doesn't matter if the team's mm -hmm. 0-8. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to continue to stay on your A game, like we talked about earlier. And the Saints yeah. probably did let off the gas a little bit. And But you, you know what? It's the Falcons. And with the Saints and Falcons rivalry, it's always going to be a big game. And the Falcons are always going to play their A game yeah. against the Saints. And that's what yeah. happened on Sunday. Well, uh, I have been wrong before in life, and God knows I will be wrong again before he calls me home. But my gut tells me we're not going to see another performance like this out of this team, at least not this year. I agree, and I think your gut is telling you right, because <laughs> let me tell you, Drew Brees obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the whole entire country, um, but w the things that he said after that game he was like, if I would have dropped the ball an inch more right here, I would, you know, they would have caught it. Right. He pays so much attention to detail mm -hmm. and the execution of the game, the game plan, everything that needs to be in place in order to be a winning team. And when you have a guy like that leading your team, and as well with Sean Payton, I don't think you're going to have anything else like we saw this past Sunday. Obviously, uh, you have taken a new position, although it's not new now. You started back in February with the Louisiana High School Athletic Association. 
obviously you all want as many people as possible going out and taking the time to support the young men that are in pursuit of a state championship in football. That's exactly right. I mean, these kids work so hard all season to get to this point, and it means so much to these communities, especially the smaller ones, um, to get to host these playoffs at their home field and to involve their community. So go out, support your teams, um, download the LHSA live app if you don't have it, because we're going to have uh, different playoff games streamed live on our app. Uh, nice. That's a great thing. So you can watch if you can't, if you're out of town or something like that. And we'll also have all the uh, score updates on our Twitter and on our app as well. So we're encouraging everybody still go out to the game and have a good time, but support those guys because they've worked really hard to get there. Now, obviously, this is South Louisiana and the football is king, but we don't ever want to be accused of being sexist. There's a lot of volleyball that's still left to be played. Basketball uh, is just getting started, both boys and girls. So there's a little something out there for every taste, particularly this time of year, courtesy of the LHSAA, right? That's right. We're gearing up for a big state championship run this week, uh, November 14th through 16th are the volleyball state championships tournament. So the quarterfinals will start on the 14th. We're really excited about that. That's at the Pontchartrain Center in Kenner. Yes. Um, cross country state championships in NAC uh, um, not Natchitoches, but at Northwestern State University in Natchitoches. Um, uh -huh. Those will be happening the following week. Then that flows into the swimming uh, state championships, wow. which are um, at the Spar Aquatic Center in Lake Charles or Sulphur, Louisiana. And then Spirit State Championships on November 30th. And then you head in to the football to state the championship. Yeah. So that, that's how it goes. But we're excited for the rest of these sports, and they all deserve you know all the attention as much as football does because all of these kids work hard to get to where they are now you see how hard bless her heart kate has been working swimming <laughs> volleyball basketball kicking up state championship for football if for no other reason get out there and support these young men and women and of course our good friend kate adams for all the hard work that she and the great folks at the louisiana high school athletic association have been putting in to educating our kids and of course to teaching them life lessons as well very special thank you kate thank you as always for filling in for roger no, of course i always appreciate it no problem all right on behalf of kate the coach and the crew. I'm Clarence Bugs. See you next week with another edition of the Roger Kador Show. See you then. All right, Nailed got it. it. Kate. <laughs>